wherever you are right now. Let's give God a big praise today. He's so worthy of all that we can give.
Hallelujah. Good morning, church. How are you doing this morning? I thank God for your lives. God has been so good to you and me. And when I stand here, my heart is filled with joy because I did not be in the Lord who was on our side. And today he's standing by us. Where will we be? So the first thing that comes into mind is to praise God. And as we're praising God, I'm going to ask you, we are going to pray for our children, the young ones, the little ones. As some of them are at home now studying. But the enemy is crafty, always will come against the minds of our children. But you and I, we are the weapon to, to destroy the enemy's uh, schemes. So I want us to pray for children right now. Father, we just want to thank you and we salute you for who you are. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, forevermore. You change not, no matter what is happening. Lord, you are the same God. So we have this boldness and confidence to come to the throne of grace, the throne of mercy and help such a time like this to ask you on behalf of our children that you watch over our children in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the seed of the righteous will be delivered. And our seed, they are like arrows and we shoot them into their purposes in the name of Jesus, that they will walk in the perfect will of God all the days of their lives. Therefore, we stand on the authority of your word and we break every assignment of the enemy concerning them in the name of Jesus. I pray against every fear in their minds, any peer pressure of this life in their minds right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, when they go to, on social media, even where we are not watching, Holy Spirit, direct their heart with your fear so that they will not be influenced with evil things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace of God that passes all understanding over our children in the name of Jesus. Those who are going through challenge, depression, anxiety, in the name of Jesus, I break that pattern. Hallelujah. And this time I pray. It is important that we pray for our children especially they are not married yet we have to pray for their future partners because listen according to scripture you know apart from salvation marriage is very important things and i heard people say that marriage is second salvation so join me and let us pray for our, uh, for our children's future uh, husbands and wives in jesus name holy spirit this time we pray for our children Lord, we pray for whom they have to marry. Lord, except you build the house, the builder will build in vain. And except you watch over the city, the watchman will watch but in vain. It means we cannot do it without you. So we commit their entire lives to you. We ask you in the name of Jesus that they will not meet any Delilah spirit or Ahab or Absalom in the name of Jesus. Anybody who will come in uh, with sheep clothing, but inwardly they are wolves by your spirit and by your grace expose them in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare upon all the children, the young people in Dominion Center that you will not lose your way in terms of getting married in the name of Jesus. You will meet the right woman. You will meet the right man. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Lord, I want to thank you and bless you. This time I want to pray for all those who are fearful. According to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, you said in your word, you have not given us spirit of fear, but spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Therefore, fear is not from you. Fear is a spirit. Fear has a torment. And I stand on the authority of your word. And I cancel every fear, demonic fear, anxiety, the spirit that is behind it, I break it in the name of Jesus. Those who are afraid of tomorrow, facing tomorrow, those who are afraid that they will not get a job, those that, you know, this pandemic has destroyed their faith and their hope in you. This time I stand on the authority of the word of God and the word that is invested in me and according to the grace that I'm standing under, I break that shackle right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command 
command you, devil, take off your hands from them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, let that fear be broken and go in Jesus' name. Therefore, I ask that your mind will be on Christ and the word of God, and he will give you perfect peace in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against insomnia right now. In the name of Jesus, in a dialogue that is negative, right now I bind it. In the name of Jesus, your dreams, in the mighty name of Jesus, I cancel it right now. Fear of premature death. You are not the portion. I curse you right now in the name of Jesus. Every door, every hole that you go through, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Right now, I call them forth to walk in boldness and confidence because the Bible says, don't be afraid of a sudden fear when it comes because he, the Lord, will be be your comforter and will be the one who will keep you. You will never be afraid because God is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I want to encourage you. Job said that what I greatly fear has come upon me. What I was dreadful of is happening to me. Whatever you think of can happen to you. So I want to challenge you and encourage you. Don't think fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the same way with fear, you will please the enemy. Fear is the realm and the platform the enemy works on. So don't be afraid. Even if you are afraid, begin to say that I am not afraid. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Begin to speak right now prophetically. Declare your own boldness. Declare your own stand. The enemy can do you nothing. Because Jesus Christ has won the victory for you. All you have to do is activate by believing and by speaking it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and continue to speak, especially begin to speak in tongues. Even if you are bathing, if you are cooking, if you are dressing up, speak in tongues because there is power in tongues. He that speaks in unknown tongue, you know, you don't speak to any man, but you speak to God. In the spirit, you speak mysteries. And one translation is that you activate the future things into being. So when you are speaking in tongues by faith, it's very powerful. Maybe your mind will be unfruitful, but trust me, in the spirit, you are speaking mysteries. And Paul says that I will pray with my spirit and I will also pray with my understanding. So both are good. And let me tell you, most of the time, if I'm praying for one hour, two hours, one and a half hours will be in tongues only. Because why? Because tongues activates and open the supernatural world to you. And what your normal eyes cannot see, when you begin to pray in tongues, you begin to see. And that is why 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 10, 11, Paul talks about, you say, what the eyes cannot see, the ears cannot hear, neither would it even enter into the heart of man. Holy Spirit. Spirit has revealed them to us. Hallelujah. Because it's only the Spirit of God that knows the things of God. And when you begin to pray in tongues, you activate the presence of the Almighty God. But again, you have to do it by faith and in faith. Without faith, you can pray in tongues 10 hours and it will not do you anything. So I want to encourage you, church, pray in tongues, especially in your private time. Pray in tongues and God will bless you. I speak prophetically over you. That though you walk in the valley of the shadow of this life, you will fear no evil because the Lord is with you. His staff and rod will comfort you. The Lord said that he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. This morning, I decree and I declare upon you that fresh oil and fresh anointing rest upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, you will bear fruit 
in your old season, you will not die, but you will live to declare the goodness of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, when you come into the house of God with the notion that there is God here, and you come with that faith, and you are receiving everything I'm telling you, trust me, you will see it in the mighty name of Jesus. Mary says something to Elizabeth. He said there shall be a performance only to those who believe. Do you want to believe this morning? Do you want to believe this morning? It's by you believing and you confessing, it becomes your possession. So begin to believe and begin to speak. There is power on your tongue. What you speak is very important. And I keep telling people that you cannot stop people from saying negative things about you. But you can nullify it and you begin to speak prophetically. Things that you want to see, things you want God to do for you, begin to say it until you see it. When you go to the doctor and they give you medication, they say finish the course or the dose. You don't do three days. If it's for seven days, you won't see the maximum impact. And it's the same way. Whatever you are doing, keep on believing, keep on speaking, keep on saying, keep on walking in it, and you will see it in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May his countenance shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And above all, Bible says, surely goodness and mercy, they are your body guides. They will follow you. Not some days, but all the days of your life. So believe that when you are walking, you know, spiritually, there is two strong body guides on your sides, goodness and mercy. They will follow you all the days of your life. So wherever you are going, wherever you are, know that you are not alone. God bless you. God bless every one of you. Children and youth, all of you, God bless you. We love you and we are praying for you. Help me to welcome our own Pastor Sam. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. You are welcome to Dominion Center Church Service today. And we thank God that you tune in today. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all those of you who are watching us globally. We thank God for coming to us today. And we believe that you are going to be blessed. This is the day that the Lord has made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to delve into the word of God today. And before we do that, I'd like to remind you of this scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Yes, praise God is another day, another opportunity for us to delve into the word of God and to learn about him. We thank God for what he has been teaching us the last few weeks about the life of faith. We've learned that faith is a lifestyle of the believer. We've learned several times that faith is also basically the word of God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We've learned also that uh, faith uh, in, in, in getting faith, we must, uh, we must believe in the word of God. And we must make declaration of the word of God that we believe. And then also we must do or act upon that which we believe and that which we declare. We've learned also that faith is a spiritual force. And therefore we need to engage in the word of God. We need to actually activate the word of God, take God by his word, and stand on it every day, every moment in our lives. Faith is the lifestyle of the believer. There's no other way that we can be successful in our work with God without faith. And today, I'd like us to be looking at a faith as an attitude. There's a, an attitude of being fully persuaded by God, fully persuaded by the promises of God. Today, I would like us to look at Romans chapter 4, verse number 16, down reading to verse number 22. I know you have your Bibles with you today, and so let's open to Romans chapter 4, 
verse number 16 down to verse number 22. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. That is, confident trust in the unseen God. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith, in believing in him, trusting in his word. That is, confident trust in the unseen God, in order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham, not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. Verse number 17, as it is written in Scripture, I have made you a father of many nations in the sight of him whom he believed. That is God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. In hope, verse number 18, against hope, Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations as he had been promised by God. So numberless shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he considered his own body now as good as dead for, for producing children since he was about to about a hundred years old, and, the, and he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse number 20. But did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God. Now verse 21. Being fully convinced, in other translations persuaded, that God had the power to do what he has promised. Therefore, his faith was created to him as righteousness, right standing with God. We thank God. Put your hands together and we got praise for the reading of his word. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for what, I mean, he shared with us this morning. Being fully persuaded, being fully convinced <laughs> that which God has promised, he would do it. What is this Attitude of being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. I mean, I mean, you can call it, I, I, it's like being fully persuaded faith. <laughs> it is highly developed faith. Fully persuaded is the, an attitude of a highly developed belief, trust, confidence in the word of God or in what he has said or in his promise. Is a highly developed faith, the kind that cannot be moved and always takes the victory. Fully persuaded, fully convinced attitude of the believer that which God has promised shall come to pass. That you are not going to be moved by what you say, but anybody what anybody says. That you're going to only be moved by the word of God and by his promises. It's the kind of attitude that gives you victory. It's that kind of attitude that possesses. It's, faith is an attitude. The last lifestyle, you must have an attitude 24-7, every moment in your life, that you are fully convinced that which God has promised will shall come to pass. He takes possession of everything that grace has made available and doesn't leave anything on the table. It is a decision that you have to make. Fully persuaded attitude is a decision that you have to make in your life. That in your life, you will make that decision to walk in it. That you decide, you determine, you desire and you make it happen. You make it work in there. That nothing can convince you about. There's, there are two ways about it. Yeah? You, 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 are, you are convinced beyond every shadow of doubt. 
Hallelujah. You are convinced beyond every shred of ambiguity that that which God has promised you shall come to pass. Say amen, somebody. That is the attitude of the believer. That is the attitude of faith. You know, when God promises things, you know what happens. All hell breaks loose. Now you begin to look around and see what is around you. Let's see how Abraham developed it in his life. The fully convinced attitude. Here, before we go further, let's look at certain points here. In verse number 16, I want us to be looking at here, first of all, he's talking about the promise of God. The promise of coming of his son, the promise of eternal life, the promise of, of having the, the faith, the belief, the righteousness of God. It is the promise of God I inherited entirely by faith. In verse number 16, it's inherited entirely by faith, not by anything else. It is by faith. Your lifestyle must be faith life. Everything that you do on this earth, everything that you do in ministry, Everything that you do at home, everything, everywhere you go, when you wake up in the morning, when you go back to sleep, everything that you do, your lifestyle must be the lifestyle of faith. He says the promise of God are inherited entirely by faith. In verse number 17, it's also talking the promise of God are assured entirely by God. Assured entirely by God. Hallelujah. And I like the scriptures. Abraham said something. <laughs> he said, he said the, the Bible says here, uh, he, the one who, who calls the dead back to life, who speaks life to the dead, who brings back to life the dead, and who calls things which are not as they, they were, as though they were, as though they were, that he called, he called where there was darkness in light. He didn't call darkness. He said light. So he called light as though light, be, light existed before. Calling things that they, they are as though they were. Giving life to the dead. And the third thing here in, I think it's verse number uh, 18, it says, the promise of God are given to those who share in the faith of Abraham. Talking about the promise of God. It's entirely by faith. Secondly, it's assured by God. And it's also given, the promise given to those who share in the faith of Abraham. What are the attitudes of this attitude of being persuaded by faith? Or what are the characteristics of this attitude? Because that attitude has got characteristics. It has got characters in there. It's got an attitude there. So the attitude itself has got attitude. The attitude of being fully persuaded itself has got its attitude. <laughs> Let's look at it. Number one, Abraham here in this particular scriptures that we've read today disregarded his circumstance. He totally looked past his weakness. In verse number 19, the same Romans chapter 4, he says, And be not weak in faith, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body as dead. And even, and, and, and verse number, and, 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 and the deadness of his, of, of, of his uh, own uh, wife, uh, his womb, Sarah. That means Abraham knew that his body was dead at that particular time. God gave the promise to Abraham to come out of his country, come out of his kindred at the age of 75. And there he said, you'll be a father of many nations. There he spoke into the life of Abraham at the age of 75 that he will be the father of many nations. His wife was 65 years old. And at that time, they looked at the past childbearing. So he considered his body, you know, you need to do something as a man to be able to produce so Abraham looked at his body and then he, he realized that his body was dead. And irrespective of the deadness of his body, irrespective of the deadness of the womb of his wife, Sarah, he looked past that one. And he considered the strength, the ability, and the faithfulness of God. We'll get there. So for you to have this attitude of being fully convinced 
You must deal with the weaknesses and the circumstances that you see every day. In fact, you have to have this attitude. And it's an attitude that <laughs> is very, very important. And I always, always say, see, look, the devil who always comes with all sort of uh, things crying to you and showing you all your weaknesses, all your, all, your, all your circumstances, all your failures, all your delays, things that are in your life when God promises you. It doesn't matter your weakness here. You see, Abraham said to himself, I don't care about my age. I don't care about the age of my wife. If God has promised, he would do it. Hallelujah. So he rejected, not that he, he admitted he was old. He knew that he was old. He did not refuse to admit that he was old. 75 years, 75 years and 80 years, 90 years, even at the age of 89, 99, still the child has not come yet. Maybe it was 99, 100 years that, you know, the child came, the promise. Let's forget about Hagar and Ishmael. He was not a son of promise, no, at all. And I'll talk about that later. He believed that he himself, the promise to him and Sarah will come to pass. That's the thing. He, the Bible says he did not consider the deadness of his body. We today are always looking at our weaknesses. It doesn't matter your weakness. You know, what he did was he, re, he rejected the age, his age. He, re, he ignored the word. He, the, word, the word says he, he, was, he, he refused to accept that, that sort of age that he was in. That his age could hinder him from having the baby. Yes, he was old. But he did not consider his body as dead. That means he somehow ignored his circumstance. There are certain words that I can use. He, he shone away his weakness. He overlooked his circumstance. He failed to notice it, though it was there. He knew that he was old. He knew that his wife was old. His wife was 65. So at the age of, he was 10 years older. So when Abraham was 99, uh, uh, Sarah was 89. Still, baby has not come. He paid no attention to it. He refused it to bother him. And I tell you something, that's what is happening to us. The reason why we are not walking by faith is when we look around us, we see our lack of education. We see our lack of not having resources. We see how even we speak. We speak. Somebody says, I can't, I can't speak good English. If God has promised you anything, if God has said that he will use you to do anything, it doesn't matter your education. He will go past your education and he will still use you to the glory of his name. So I came here to encourage somebody that it doesn't matter your circumstance. It doesn't matter your situation. God can use you. You know what? I, I, one day I, I, I read about a man called Mark Vujicic. Mark, Mark Vujicic has no legs and has no arms. From Melbourne, Australia. Here is a man who was born with no legs and no arms. But he's got a ministry traveling around the world, encouraging people who have legs and who have arms in the church that God can do it, that God can use them to achieve their dreams, that God can use them to achieve their purpose, that it is not over because of their circumstance. Somebody who has, has no hands, has no legs, still believes that he, could, he can achieve his purpose in this life. What is stopping you from inheriting the promise of God? Where is your faith? Where is your belief? Where is your faith? I come from a background that I shouldn't be standing here talking to you. Poor background, I'm telling you. It was not easy. <laughs> but I tell you something. Look at, I thank God for where I am at the moment. I've not arrived yet. But if I looked down or looked at my circumstance, I, 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 I could not be able to even open my mouth to speak. I, I, I cannot. I could not. But I thank God. Hallelujah. I've been through situations that I have to wait for a long time. You, you have to look past your circumstance. You have to look past your situation. If there's any weakness in your life, God can still use you. If God calls you, he will do it. I mean, look at what happened to Moses. 
Don't be like Moses initial in his life initially. Moses, Moses was not fully convinced and fully persuaded that which God has promised or what God was saying, he was able to perform it. Five times Moses gave God excuses. His excuse number one was, I, I'm not adequate enough for the task. And God had to convince him. He said, he, I mean, Moses said, who am I? And God had to convince him <laughs> that I'll be with you. He went ahead again and gave an excuse from Exodus chapter is it 13 uh, to 14. <laughs> Over there. And God had to convince Moses that he will be with him. His second excuse is that I don't know enough. First, he says, he says himself, I'm not adequate enough. Some of you feel that you are not adequate enough to inherit the promise of God concerning your life. Or that some things that God has said to you that he will, he will use you to do. There are many of us that God, God wants to use us to do tremendous things on earth here. But we look at ourselves and we, 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 we see our adequacy. We need to be fully convinced like Abraham did. That no matter our weakness, God is able to do it. He says, people will not take me seriously. First, he says, I'm not adequate for this task. Secondly, he says, I don't know enough. That lack of knowledge. <laughs> and he says, go, go. Say, I am has sent you. Go and tell them, I am has sent you. The third is, people won't take me seriously. That's lack of authenticity. He, he lacked, that there, there won't be trust. He knew what he had done. <laughs> when God performed three powerful signs to him. Still was not convinced. He says, I'm not good with words. I'm not eloquent. I'm not eloquent. Hey, folks, it's not eloquency. It is not eloquence. That brings results. It is trust, complete trust in the almighty God. There are some people who are not eloquent at all, cannot even put words together. But God is using them mightily. They are walking in the, in the, in the promise of God. They are, they are blessed. There are the, the richest people on earth. Some rich, rich, some rich people on earth never finish university. And I'm not saying education is not good. Please, please don't get me wrong. Get all that you can get. But I tell you something, <laughs> getting PhD does not actually bring total results in your life. But knowledge is good. It is a complete trust in the Almighty God. So get your knowledge, get your PhDs, get your PhD, D, 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 Ds, get all of them with trust in the Almighty God. Moses said, I don't know anything. I can't even speak. God said, who made that mouth? Who made that mouth, Moses? Now God has to say, who made that mouth? You cannot speak. Huh, I will send, I will bring your brother. <laughs> you see, that is God, if God says he will use you, your excuse will not count at all. If God says he will use you, he will go past your circumstance. If God says he will use you, he will deal with your weakness. It is not your weakness. It is not your circumstance. God is God. And when he says he will use you, he will use you, period. That is the fully persuaded faith attitude. The fully convinced that if God speaks, or when God speaks to you, he will perform it. And even to that point, <laughs> Moses said, I'm, I'm not willing. Still, you see, don't be like Moses. Don't be like Moses. But eventually, Moses was used. But I, I made reference to this for you to know. The, the excuse that we make when it comes to inheriting the promise of God, living by faith and walking by faith, availing ourselves for God to use us. And so we have to understand that, that some people want the, the, the thing to be perfect, the, the everything to be correct before they take the move. <laughs> some people want circumstances to seem good and all right before, when God speaks to them, they want everything to be right. When God called Abraham, come out of your country, he moved. He didn't question God. And so, first of all, you need to ditch your circumstance, your weakness that you think you have, your past experiences, whatever you did in the past. Moses was bad, Paul was bad, you were bad, everybody. <laughs> but God uses 
everybody because of his grace. The second thing that Abraham did, Abraham actually took God at his word. He held on to the promises of God. In verse number 21, it says, And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, that what he has promised, that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. And fully convinced, that is the key passage, the key verse. And fully convinced that which, what he has promised, he was able also to perform it. And so here, there are two things that Abraham saw. Number one was the ability of God. In verse number 17, again, I read, it says, as it is written in Scripture, I have made you a father of many nations. God saying this. In the sight of him, hallelujah, hallelujah, in the sight of him, that him is capital H. <laughs> then you know that is, is God, is Christ. He says, in the sight of him in whom he believed, that is God, that is God, that is God who gives life to the dead. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the sight of God who gives life to the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, the one who has promised you gives life to the dead. It means he gives life to anything that is a bad situation, a weakness, uh, anything that is dead in your life, any circumstance that you think is hindering you from, from possessing what God has called you to possess. He brings life to the dead. And listen to this. And calls into being that which does not exist. And so therefore, when God said to Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations, God spoke to Abraham's loins. God spoke to something that was not existing. God spoke as if it existed. God spoke as if Isaac was there. When he spoke to Abraham, Abraham was looking at his circumstance. God was seeing Abraham. God was seeing Isaac, the promise in there. Calling things which are not as though they were. Or calling things which are not as though they exist. Hallelujah. This is the God that you serve. And so Abraham held on to this God who brings life to death and who calls things which are not as though they exist. Praise the name of Jesus. That should increase your faith. That's the God that you serve. No other person. It's not how much a church attendance you make. Good. It doesn't matter how much scriptures you know. Very good. It's good. It keeps your faith. It doesn't how much prayer you do. If you cannot believe that you serve a God who can bring life to the dead and cause things which are not as though they exist, then you are not fully convinced that he's able to perform that which he has promised you. Abraham came to a place that he was fully convinced. Moses should have known this, that when he said, go, I'll be with you. Then he was with somebody who could bring life to the dead and can call things which not as though they exist. So the ability of God, that's what Abraham saw, the ability of God, that he can do it. The second thing is the faithfulness of God. He can do it and he will. He can do it and he will. He cannot, it's not just he can do it, he will. He can do it and he will. He can do it and he will. He can do it and he will. He says in verse number 18, in hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations as he had been promised by so. So numberless shall your descendants be. That, that was the, so numberless shall your descendants be. God's faithfulness. Look at what is happening today. Abraham believed and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. We need to come to a place where we should say yes to the promise of God. God's promises are yes and amen. 
If we believe, if we desire something from God, we should fully believe. We should be convinced that he will be able to do it. And he will do it. The third area, attitude that you need to adopt. The first one is looking past or uh, disregarding your circumstance or your weakness. Teach it. Look past it. Don't let it bother you. I know it's not easy. When we, we, be, we, start, we, we will deal with how to deal with our, our, our own beliefs today, not today, later. And the second thing is that uh, he was fully convinced about his word. So he held on to the, God's word. In fact, he held on to God, God's word. So he, 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 <laughs> he took God at his word. He said, Lord, you said I'll be a father of many nations. Hallelujah. You said I'll be the father of many nations. You said it. Do it. I'm not moving. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. Taking God's word, taking God at his word and holding on to his promises. And the third is obeying God without delay. Obeying God without delay. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, the Bible says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. My God. In natural sense, it's foolishness. That you don't know where you are going, but you get up and you go. Naturally, it's foolishness. It could mean presumption as well. You don't know where you're going. But because Abraham heard God, my God, praise the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'm not saying we should not plan our lives. I'm not saying we should not plan our trips. I'm not saying we should not plan things that God tells us to do. Here, the Bible says, when Abraham heard, he says, Come and I'll take you to a place. God did not mention the name of the place. But he says, come and I will show you where you will go. The Bible says, Abraham obeyed and went. And I like, it says, even though he did not know where he was going. Obedience is the key. As I finish off and wrap this, all this series, The Life of Faith, I, 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 together I would like to say obedience. If you have, did not hear me for the past six weeks or eight weeks of my teaching, I would like to say to you, just obey God. Just obey God. Just obey God without delay. If you hear God, obey him. In fact, he has his written word that comes to us by revelation. It's in there. Whatever he has written here in his, in his word, in the scriptures that we read, is by, it's inspired by God. It is actually empowered by God. It's actually directed by God. Just obey him. Don't wait for the answers to come before you move. You know, sometimes that's what we do. All the, all the people, heroes in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, I mean, Noah could have questioned God about building the giant ark. Noah could have done that, but he obeyed. <laughs> you know, the Israelites, when they were told to go around Jericho and singing, they could have, they could have queried and, and said, what, what, what a nonsense thing we should do that. Is this, that doesn't make sense. But they obeyed. See, all of them obeyed, and that is why they inherited the promises of God. This is the kind of faith that pleases God. The fully persuaded attitude. Our work with God. That you obey God without hesitation, without delay. When God speaks to you, do it. Last time I told you, when God tells you, come, come. When he tells you, go, go. When God says he will do it, do it. It's as simple as that. Don't try to hear voices. Don't try to analyze things. Don't try to use your logic. Sometimes we've come to a place where when God speaks to us, we use our minds, we use our logic, we think we are wiser than God. That is why we are not achieving the heights that God wants us to achieve. 
to really live this life of faith and be successful, I speak to you today that you live this, have this attitude of full convinced, fully convinced, fully persuaded like Abraham was fully persuaded by the word of God, fully persuaded by the promise of God. If, if we, when God says, when God speaks, when God tells you, when God calls you, when God says something to you, do it. That's the only way that you have peace and success. We, we sometimes, when we hear God, we go to tell other people for clarification. We go to people for confirmation. You go to people for confirmation when God speaks to you. That is why you need to incline your ears to the word of God. That is why, you see, it starts from, it starts from walking in the black and white <laughs> that we read, or the red ones in our Bible. Obedience. That's where it starts from. If you want to hear God's voice, God's spirit, it starts from the, the, the beginning. It starts from somewhere. If you, if you don't hear what God is saying, if you, don't, if you don't obey what God is saying to you, I tell you something, your faith will not increase and you cannot live that life of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Today I speak to you that your faith life, your faith level is going to increase. I mean, this series will take you to the next level, to the next height. You move to the next level right now where your faith is impacted, that you're going to walk in dominion. That whatever God has said, he will do. That whatever God has promised you, that what God has said concerning you will come to pass. If you believe in the word of God and you walk in the word of God and declare the word of God and you are fully convinced every day, fully convinced anytime, 24-7, that what God has promised, that he's faithful God, he has the ability to do it, he, he can do it and he will do it, he can do it and he will do it. You are fully persuaded that that which God has promised you shall come to pass, you shall have whatever he says. I tell you something, if God tells you he will do it, he will do it. Hold on to God, hold on to his word. Hold on to his promises. Hold God to it. Say, God, you said you would do it. Walk in it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving anywhere. You see the promise of God. You are going to walk in, a, in, in, in some realms, in some dimensions that you have never walked before. Your life is going to be impacted. You are going to really enjoy this walk of faith. You are listening to me today, wherever you are hearing me from, let me say this to you. <laughs> Your faith will be rewarded. You've been waiting for a long, long time, and that is what it is. Sometimes we're not able to do the waiting and the patience. <laughs> it's all part, it's all part of it. Well, if you wait for long, that does not mean that you don't have faith. If it does not come to you yet, that does not mean that you don't have faith. Just keep on plodding. Keep on believing. And that which you are believing God for, for many years, it shall come to pass and it's soon now. Don't give up right now. Put your hands together and God praise today. You are believing God for your healing. By his stripes, you were healed. And you are healed right now. Hold on to his word. No matter the pain, no matter the circumstance, it shall come to pass. God has promised you with prosperity. You look at yourself right now. You say, so where is it coming from? I can't see anything at all. What can I do right now? I speak to you right now. If God has said to you, he will use you, he will prosper you, he will make you wealthy for the sake of his kingdom, wait for it. Just obey God. Keep obeying God and he'll bring them to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. He will go past your circumstance. Don't look at your circumstance. Your circumstance is crying loud and, and loud that you are not hearing and seeing the goodness and the, and, the, and the faithfulness and the ability of God. Today, I've come to you today. Ignore all your weaknesses. Ignore all your circumstances. God is able to go past them all. He is the powerful God. He made you. He created you. He did everything for you. He's able to do it. Just hold on to his word and you bring them to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is not arrogance. This is an attitude of faith. Believe and it shall come to pass. You shall receive it. Receive every promise of God concerning your life. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. If he has promised you 
be fully persuaded that he has the ability and he's faithful to bring them to pass. He can and he will. God bless you and keep you. May his come shine upon you and give you a breakthrough. God bless you all for his word today. Put your hands together and give God praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ma, let's pray a little bit right now. My God. Just, just obey God. Just obey God. It's obedience, you know. Just obey God. Just obey God. Just obey God and pray right now. Just, just speak, speak, speak in, in, in other tongues right now. Just speak prayer language. Come on. Rabu shata zebro Mandala mo zegrete bo jebra katara bo zabataya Mandara babashi kadabo sakra. If you are watching me from any part of the world today and you want to give your life to Christ Jesus, I would like to help you to receive him as your personal Savior and Lord. Wherever you are watching me, wherever you are watching me from, wherever in this part of the world that you are watching me from, if you receive the word of God today and you want to give your life to Christ Jesus, I would like to pray with you for you to receive him as your personal savior and Lord, wherever you are. Just close your eyes. All eyes closed right now, wherever you are. We want to believe God for those who want to give their lives to Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to say this after me, truly from your heart, wherever you are around the world, wherever you are watching us from. Lord Jesus, I've come to you, Lord, today as a sinner. I cannot save my life. I know I'm a sinner, and I know you are the savior of sinners. Today, I confess that Jesus is the son of God. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And now he's seated at the right hand side of God the Father. I take Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord. Come into my heart and life today and receive me into your kingdom. I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer sincerely from your heart, I can assure you, you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your child of God. Wherever you are right now watching me, if you are not in the city of London, wherever you are, I'd like you to find a local church and grow in the day, grow in your faith, because you need to grow. This, you are a, 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 much, a, a, a baby in the Lord right now. <laughs> it's like giving birth to a child. The child must grow. And you have to be somewhere that you can be fed. And it's in the house of God. Find a house of God. Find a church. And go there and be fed in the word and grow in the word. And give your, and there's, and there's, and so that you can also uh, do something for God there. Have a ministry. Uh, be a witness. Be a disciple of Jesus. But if you are in London, I would like to encourage you to find your way to Dominion Center very soon. Thank God very soon we will all come together again. Amen. So come to Dominion Center, I would like to welcome you. I may not be able to give you a big hug, but hey, I can speak to you. We can welcome you here. We love you. For the time being, just, you know, and you can grow here. We will love you and we'll bless you. I want to see you. You are precious in the sight of God. Amen. Praise God. Church, it's time for our offerings and tithes. Let's bless the Lord. It's the first Sunday of the month of July. We'll be celebrating from the Lord's table very soon. 
So gather around the table, uh, bring your bread and your wine, and we'll be dining with the Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Let us give. Let us give our substance to God. It is important that we do this. Now, I'd like to encourage you to do this and observe this. I'm telling you, the uh, Bible says we, if you give bountifully, you shall receive bountifully. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. The Bible tells us that uh, when we give, God blesses us and makes us resourceful. Okay? He, he will continue to uh, 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 bless us so that we can be a blessing to his kingdom and to the poor. You cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. Whatever you give to God, he gives back to you in multiples. That is what he can do. That is who he is and that is what he does. He is a God that blesses. He's given opportunity for you to share in his kingdom. And today you are giving to the church. You are giving to the body of Christ. You're giving to Christ's body. I want to give your best to God. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, run over shall men give unto your bosom. And members of Dominion Center, as you give, remember your pound a day. Let's give. Let's, let's do it right now. It's on the screen now. Okay, give online. If you don't do it right now, you forget. So please, I want you to take your cards and just bless the Lord. Okay, let's bless the Lord. Let's obey God in this. Father, we pray as your people give today, bless them according to your word. We are giving our substance. We are giving our heart. We are giving our love to you. That which you have blessed us with increases on every side. You, you, are, you are a faithful God. We heard today that, Father, you are able and you are faithful to do it. You have the ability and you are full of faith. You believe in your own words. You are full of faith. So, Father, we know you will reward us. We thank you, Father. Let's have testimonies coming out of this. Increase us on every side. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody who is watching me today, you are, you are giving substantially to God and you'll be rewarded. You will share this testimony. When God blesses you, gives you breakthrough, share this testimony. Huh. Somebody is, you are obeying God right now. You are believing God for something. You are obeying God. You are, it's not that you are giving that God, but you want to bless the Lord because you, he has blessed you so much. <laughs> so you, 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 your heart of thanksgiving, obey him and do it. And God will increase you. Amen. There's the information on the screen. Just do that. The account information and where to give to. Amen.
Hallelujah. Well, today is the first Sunday of the, of the month of July, and uh, we're going to dine from the Lord. We're going to dine with the Lord. And I would like you to get your bread and your wine ready. And I, I want us to uh, observe this. So let's all pray before this. Let's do this quickly. We give you praise and glory. Thank you for your faithfulness. We come before you today. We come to your table today to dine with you. Father, you said often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. When we remember you or remind ourselves of you, whenever we remember you, God, we remember salvation, life. We always remember that. We remember how you love your son, Jesus, so much, but you sent him to come to die for us. And because of his death, because of the blood that he shed for us, today we have a relationship with you. Remind ourselves of the healings that are taking place in our lives because your son took stripes on his back and those whips represented our healings. We remind ourselves today. Remind ourselves, Father, of how you have revealed yourself to us through your word. By your divine wisdom and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we remember this today. Today we are eating from your table today. And just as you sat with the disciples on that, in that evening and you took bread and you blessed the bread and you broke it and you gave it to the disciples, so we do it today and observe this. After that, you took the cup and you said the cup, the wine represents the, your blood, the blood of Jesus, your blood. Today, we take the bread today And we break your bread, the bread today, and we eat the bread, and we dine with you. Father, we pray by God that as we eat from your table today, as we break the bread today, as we eat from your table today, we ask, O oh God, that you bless us. Let's all pray right now before. Let's do it. Get your bread ready. Let's all do it. Come on, let's do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Sakatarabu Jandarabasaya. Mandarabu Zigru Darabu Satarabu Yabashinakaya. Mandurubu Zigragu Darabasakraya Darabayanda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The same night he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. Today, I break the bread of God right now. This is the body of Jesus Christ broken for us. Eat. In remembrance of the Lord Jesus. After that, he took the cup, said, this is my blood that I shed with you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Let's drink this in remembrance of him. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to share the table with you today. You know the needs of your people. We have shared with you our desires. We thank you, Father, for receiving answers to all our prayers, our requests. 
that are done according to your will. We thank you, Father, for embracing us today. Thank you, Father, for revelation knowledge in your word. Thank you, Father, for growth in the grace, your grace. Thank you, Father, for blessing us, my God, with all the promises that you have shared in your word. Thank you, Father, for making us to walk in dominion. Thank you, Father, for good health. Thank you, Father, for divine healing. Thank you, Father, for major breakthroughs. Thank you, Father, for deliverance. Thank you, Father, for major deliverances in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your peace, your love, and your joy that we share with you today. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you that um, the, um, the government has sent us a, me a message that 4th of July, that is, uh, uh, in fact, today we, we, we should be opening. But um, as a church, I think notice has gone out there. We want to put things in place so that um, we'll be able to really observe all the protocols, um, government guidelines, and also um, to make sure that uh, we don't compromise with our own safety and all that. And thank God he's given us space. So uh, we are working on this, trying to put everything in place before we come back. So we'll give you notice very soon. For the time being, let us stay online and uh, we'll come back to you. I know some churches will be starting very soon and all that. We will be coming to you very soon and uh, with a short space of time, we need to make sure everything is put in place so that people can have the confidence to come and worship here and you yourself as well. So we'll see you very soon and I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing in our lives. Stay safe, okay? And stay under the blood. Stay under his canopy. Stay under his umbrella. Hallelujah. Stay under the shadow of the Almighty God. May God bless you and keep you. May his covenant shine upon you and give you a breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name, walk in dominion. Amen. Praise God. Hey there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Last week, the government announced the reopening of places of worship from July the 4th, 2020. We welcome this news and pray God's guidance in this direction. We're putting things in order to ensure we are compliant with government guidelines and more importantly, ensuring our own safety is not compromised. We have therefore decided to continue our online services and you are encouraged to continue to fully participate for your spiritual nourishment. Let's also keep praying for God's protection during this unprecedented time. Thank God we shall see each other again very soon. If you've celebrated your birthday between Monday just gone and Sunday today, Pastor Sam, Pastor Betty, the leadership team and the entire Dominion Centre family would like to wish you a glorious birthday. God bless you richly and increase you in this new season of your life. Every Monday at 9pm we'll be having one hour of intensive prayer and intercession. Our Monday conference prayer calls can be joined by dialing 0330-336-0036 and entering the PIN 259933. Our Lord is a prayer answering God. Dominion Centre will be holding Home Cell Fellowship this Tuesday on Zoom from 7pm. Get ready to connect, get ready to serve, get ready to grow and get ready to spread the word. Join Dominion Centre for Bible Study this Thursday on Zoom from 7pm. You can dial in or use the app. If you're still wondering how to join Dominion Centre Church online, you can do so in five easy steps. 
Download the Zoom app from the App Store or Play Store. Use your name so we can recognise who you are. To join DC, open the app and enter the meeting ID 208-829-0080. Remember to mute yourself, but also turn on your video so we know who you are. We look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Dominion Centre is now available on WhatsApp via 07425 132 850 and that will be from 9.30am to 5.30pm Monday to Friday. Please save this number on your phone so you don't miss out on important updates from Dominion Centre. DC Youth, are you ready for the Instagram Live Bible Study? It will be today at 1.30pm on Instagram. See you there. Keep an eye out for God's word for today from Reverend Sam Ohenea Praki. Today it's 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 and 1 Corinthians 10 13. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Hi parents, hi kids. Please stay tuned for the new children online service, which starts immediately after this main service at 1pm. See you soon.